and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, this has been um, part of what's been on my mind lately. Um, the Lord has put on my heart about people. Um, this is a little bit opposite from this, but I need to bring it up for a minute. Um, he put on my heart about people uh, not being real for Christ. Uh, people who's been playing around. Um, I think that uh, we all need to uh, get ourselves together and start understanding why we're here. Okay? Um, we're here for Christ. And we have to be real with Him. You know, and if you're a Christian, as they say, my husband always says kingdom citizen. So if you're a kingdom citizen, then we need to be honest and truthful with each other also. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I just want to bring that little tidbit out, you know, just so we can understand that just because we're in this world, we don't need to act like the world. We need to show that we are different than the world. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Now, let me get back into my, what I'm going to say here. Um, I like this chat. I like James 1 22 because it's telling us that we shouldn't just hear what's being said. You know, don't just sit around and hear what the um, man of God is saying. We need to also do Amen. what we have to do. Do what we have to. Um, if you say we need to do this, do this, we need to do it. Amen. Amen. Um, so I, I like that. Alright. Um, also, um, me and my husband was watching the Packers game uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked how they were uh, a team, you know, and I think we should be a team also, right. you know. Um, I like how um, they have people in the game and then they have people outside the game, mm -hmm. okay. They have people sitting, you know, on the benches, you know what I'm saying, ready to come in. And if you notice, when they're on the benches, ready to come in, they're out. They're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs or playing video games or singing to themselves. They're out stretching, warming up, throwing balls back and forth. They're ready to get to the game. We need to be like that. We need to be excited about doing the work of God. You know, if we're out here um, um, in the audience or out in the street, we need to get out and do right. something. Amen. Don't just sit. Right around and wait for someone else to step up first. That's right. Okay? Um, I know uh, Pastor Ron was saying how we need to, well, we need to start um, speaking. Yeah. You know, speaking up. So if, if, if there's three of us out witnessing, don't just one person witness. Right. Let all of us jump in and, and do something. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, we all can do something in the church. Okay, uh, we may all can't sing, we may all can't teach, right. we may all can't preach, you know, but we can do something in the church. Amen. So we have to be willing to serve and do what we have to do. Amen. Right. Um, everyone can pray. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody can witness. All right, and everybody can worship. Amen. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. We all can do that. Um, everyone is capable of pitching in and helping. Right. Amen? Amen? No one should be sitting around and not doing anything. That's right. Okay. If Christ was to walk through that door right now, everybody be up trying to do something. Then right. we all need to be doing that. He's, you know, he's here. Yep. Not in the physical, but he's here. Right. We need to do something. And he's in each one of us. So I'm going to say he is in the physical, but he's in each one of us. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. um, God only requires your best. All right, not the best. Okay, he requires your best. Amen. Uh, we are not to be compared to other people. All right, nor are we in competition with each other. All right. Um, service to God is on the invis is on the individual person. All right. Um, sometimes people say, "Well, I'm gonna sing this song," and then someone said, "Well, I'm gonna sing this one." But I sound better, so I'm going to do it. That's not how it works. 
whatever God lays on that person's heart to do, that's what they need to do. Amen? Amen. Um, God never promised to make you a famous Christian, as people say, oh, I'm a very good singer, so I'm going to be famous. He never said that. Some people take it, though, yep. as he's saying that. Okay? He said, when he said you're best, he's not saying that he wants you to be better than everybody else. He's just saying, whatever your ability is, be the best at it. If it's, the, if it's like Pastor Ron said, he go out and clean up the yard and stuff, if that's his best, then just do it. That's right. Amen. Don't say, I can do better than him and try to push him aside. That's right. That's Amen. not what God says. No. Whatever your skill, whatever God gives you in your heart to do, that's what you do and do your best at it. Right. Amen. Um, I'm not the best transporter at my job, mm -hmm. you know, but I do my best at that's it. Right. You know what I'm saying? This one is better than me, you know, but I do my best. That's right. And that's all God asks. Amen? Yeah. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God has furnished the word of God as a spiritual ammunition on the battlefield for the Lord. Um, his word is like a tool chest. It contains everything needed to furnish us for his word. So this so the Bible here is everything that we need is in this Bible. If we just pick it up and read it, we'll find everything we need to do is right here. Okay? Um, God has given every child of God access to his word. Yeah. He's given us access to his will. And he's also given us access to his wisdom. Mm -hmm. We just have to step forward and dig deep and receive it. Amen. Mm -hmm. I like what you said earlier, uh, Minister, Chris Minister Christie, about, um, about uh, what your husband had said. You were saying something about... Um, um, not wisdom. You were telling me something that he had told you this about relationship. Is about relationship. It's, this is not about relationship. Okay, this is about fellowship. Amen? And everyone has to do it on their own. Okay, kids, you gotta have a relationship with God on your own. Okay, you can't follow, you can't hang on to your mother and father's coattail. Alright? God has to deal with you individually. Amen? So learn to have a fellowship with them, not just a relationship. A relationship is good. You know, you get saved and have a relationship is good. But then after the relationship, it's going to be fellowship. That's right. You're going to have to learn how to go to him when you got problems. You're going to have to go to him when you got issues. Sometimes mom and dad won't be around all the time. That's right. So you have to go to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um... And also we have access to the working power of the Holy Spirit. Alright? So the Holy Spirit is what we all need. If you don't have that, then you need to ask Him for it. Amen? Um, God has furnished us with anything and everything needed to do His will and accomplish the mission that He has left us to carry out. Amen? Amen. Um, to witness to, to witness of his saving grace to win souls for Jesus. These are things that we have to do, okay? To be a lighthouse for Jesus. This is what we have to do. We have to also be a help to our felt to our fellow Christians. That's what we have to do. Okay? So we can't just sit around and let other people do it. Alright? We have to get up and do stuff and be ready to do it when we're called. Okay? If you're called to do something Get up and be ready to do it. Don't say, oh, I can't do it. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us, all right? So if, if you don't think you can sing, and I ask you to sing, or or, or Pastor Demetrius asks you to sing, get up and sing. Amen? Do what you can do. Do your best. Colossians 1 and 10, I'm going to read. Colossians 1 and 10 says, That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay? Um, scripture declares that God is willing to leave the 99 sheep and search for, them, search for the one that's lost. He cares for your soul. You are equally important as God to anyone. So if you think that you're not important to God, 
Think again. You are very important. Amen? You are very important. If you think no one cares about you, think again. God cares about you. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 5 and 7. I know I ran to a lot of people at work and they act like no one cares about them, act like um, they're alone and they're lonely and they're depressed. And I keep telling them, God is with you. Accept him as your Savior. He's with you. Okay? If you don't accept him, then he's not obligated to do anything for you. But accept him. He'll be obligated after that. He had to. Um, 1 Peter 5 and 7. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Okay? So it tells us right there that he cares for us. Amen? So how important are you to God? It's a question. How important are you to God? He left the riches and glory of heaven, came down to this world. He took on a body of flesh and suffered on the cross of Calvary and became sin for us. He even took our sins on his own body, shed, shed his blood that we might believe upon his this finished work and be saved. So we are important. He died for us. He came back. He took our sins. He he um made a way for us to be healed. He I mean he did all this stuff for us. So how come you can how come you can't say you're important? You are important to him. You are important to him. Hallelujah. You are important. And sometimes I used to I used to feel like that. Like no one cared about me, no one was worried, no one worried about me, and God does. I went through a time in my, I went through a time in my life a couple of months ago where I was so down and I was so depressed and I was so aggravated and didn't want to be bothered. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna give up. No one cares about me. Nobody worried about me. You know, um, I'm not the best speaker. You know, but no one still say I did good, but they never did. I just felt so bad. And then I said, well, you know, I'm going to stop. Give it up. And then one morning, I was sitting in here, and God told me to pray. I got on my knees. I got my prayer shawl, and I prayed. And the Lord told me, he was like, it's like a slap in the face. I'm here. Why are you worried? I'm here. If no one cares about you, I do. I'm here. You know? So I said, okay. And he cares about me. So I'm going to do stuff for him, you know? So I changed my mind. So I changed my mind and said, you know what? I'm going to do things. I'm not going to do it for people's approval. I'm not going to do it for people's approval. I'm going to do it for God's approval. Amen? I have to get out of doing things for people and start doing it for God. You know? People may not like things that are said or things that um, I may do, but as long as God is pleased, that's right, amen. then that's what's important. If God, if he's pleased, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's okay. it happens sometimes. <laughs> um, if I get, um, um, anyway, I, as long as God is pleased with what I do, what I say, that's all that matters. That's amen. all that matters, okay? Um, sometimes um, people may say, well, you're not dressed right. Oh, you don't talk right. God is happy with how I talk. He's happy with the way I dress. That's all I worry about. Amen? Amen. Sorry about that. Um, Romans 5, 8 and 9. Hallelujah. Romans 5, 8 and 9. Romans 5, 8 and 9. But God commended, but God, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Amen. Hallelujah. Christians that are sitting around doing nothing. Y'all need to get up and be excited. Amen. 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 Be it, don't wait for the next person to do something. You need to get up and do it. Amen. Amen. Your turn is going to come. 
Your turn is gonna come, all right? Um, I know some people don't wanna do anything because they wanna do it when they wanna do it. But we can't do it like that. We have to do it when God say do it, amen? amen. amen. Like I mean, Miss, Miss Chrissy just said, if you step out too soon, it ain't gonna work. It's not going to work. You got to step out when God says step out. Amen. 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 You should always be ready to serve. Always be ready. Um, doing His will for your life. So you always you should always be ready to do what God says do and when He say to do it. And that's like I say my motto. Cause that's what I always say. Do what God said do when He said do it and how He say do it. Right. Amen. Yeah. Um. Now, I'm closing out. I just want to give out one more scripture. And this whole thing, this whole message today was for people who just sitting around, you need to be excited and get ready to do something for the Lord. That's what this is all about. Getting ready to do stuff. All right. There's too many people sitting around in the church, going to church on Sundays morning, sitting around. Screaming, yelling, shouting, and go home. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the same old mess that they were doing before. You know, they don't go out and witness. They don't go talk to no one. They don't pray for no one. They don't go to the hospital. They don't go to the uh, elderly homes. They don't do none of that. They don't go to the shelters. They don't do anything. Monday to Saturday, the same old thing. They sit around, talk about people, pick up the phone, gossiping. Sunday morning, they come to church. That's not what God's supposed to do. We need to be in the spirit 24 hours a day is how I see it. Every day we need to be doing something for God. Yep. Amen. Sunday, Monday, to something. Even if he's just saying, hi, how are you to someone you don't know? Can I pray for you? Something. Jesus, he didn't just sit around and do nothing. He prayed. He witnessed the people. He prayed over people. So we need to do the same thing. Be like him. Do the same thing he did. Okay? If you don't know how to witness, ask someone to teach you. If you don't know how to pray, ask someone to teach you. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Amen? One last scripture. Philippians. 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen? Amen? The biggest obstacle to the church and to the Christian today can be summed up by just two words. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Any Christian you talk to and you ask them to do something, they'll say, I can't. Amen? And then, and then I'm going to have a question for you. Who told you that you can't? Who told you that you can't? Mm -hmm. Me, myself? I think it was Satan. Mm -hmm. Enemy? Mm -hmm. The devil? Whatever you want to call him. Mm -hmm. He's the one telling you that you can't do it. But Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. I can do all things yes, through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I can do all yes. things through Christ who strengthens who strengthens me. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So whenever someone come up to you and say, Can you do this? If you're not sure, repeat that scripture. If you do it three or four times, you're going to tell them, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. The Lord told I can do it. I can do it. I can do that job. And I want to, and I want to, um, I want to give you one more, one more, um, illustration. Amen. First Samuel 17. Is a story of David and Goliath. God needed someone to step up to the call. Saul's men were filled with fear. Now you know that giant was about 10 feet tall, right? David's courage was in the Lord. Okay? So while all, while all us 
people who are afraid to do things, okay, are like um, scared. Like David's brothers were scared. They didn't. They were, they had fear in them. They didn't want to do anything, right? But David put on the whole armor of God, and he defeated that giant. Now we have to do that also. You know, whatever we have fear of, we gotta put on that armor of God and defeat it. Now. I don't have fear from anything, but I do have one, and I, 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 I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it. Driving. <laughs> I am fearful of driving, but you know what? Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things. Amen? So, oh man, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Can do it. Can do it. Now, that's my job. Okay? Driving, that's my job. But it's defeated. It's defeated. Hallelujah. I can do it. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to say, but soon, soon, I'm going to ask Mr. Chris to help me. Soon. All right? Amen. Amen. The world today is full of, of Goliaths, but very few David. So there's a whole lot here, okay? But we need to be like David and have courage, all right? Um, David refused to be a Christian who was fearful. He asked, he asked, is there, is there not a cause? There remains a cause today, and a cause is, Christ, is of Christ, okay? I'm going to close with this little tiny... Um, Something to keep you um, encouraged, okay? God needs each and every one of us to work for Him. He needs each one of us. He needs a little kids. He needs Josiah. He needs all of us to work for Him, okay? So we need to put away our fears. Put away our fears and just to do what it is He needs us to do. There's nobody too small. There's no one too small. Okay? No one is too small. So yeah, children, right. we need you too, okay? To stand up for Christ and, and do what's right. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.